What's the most horrifying disturbing thing you've come across at someone else's house? I had some good friends, geeks, who lived in the bad part of town. Their apartment was fully infested with roaches, but they had forged a sort of Joe's apartment relationship with them. They loved to paint miniatures, and when a roach got too close, they'd go blap and smack him with a paintbrush. So they had all these braveheart roaches running around with bodies half colored in bright paint. Anyways, they're playing this long drawn out game one day. I don't remember what it was, but think risk, with one of my friends who is just this endless hard luck case. Great guy, great attitude, but life finds him and shoots on him whenever it can. After hours of play, he wins, and exultantly jumps up and cheers. The only problem is that he leaps out of his chair like Super Mario. Fist bumps a styrofoam ceiling tile, dislodging it and causing a rain of multicolored roaches to come cascading onto him. I hear he just stood there and screamed for a while. A friend of mine is a house appraiser in New Jersey. He walks into the living room of one particular client's house and there is a glass coffin in the living room with the body of a woman preserved inside. Ayla Lennon. The guy says it's his mother. My friend said it was the fastest he ever appraised a house in his entire career. While in college, I visited another friend's apartment. It was summertime in Maine, a wet summer with much rain. The basement was warm and dark. I had to go downstairs to find a hammer or something and when I clicked on the light, the entire rug, small area rug at the bottom of the stairs, which apparently collected moisture runoff from the basement stairs walls seeping water, was completely covered with mushrooms fungus at least 5 inches high. Therefore, if I stepped on the rug, my feet would have sunk about 5 inches into mushrooms. What was the creepiest thing about it was that the mushrooms would lean towards you when you got close, and would shoot spores into the air when the warm air brushed by them. So, it was as if they were watching you they could sense you close, and trying to spore you if you disturbed the air enough. I had never seen mushrooms react to warmth, or something close, let alone try to fire spores into the air to get you. I was equally fascinated terrified that I might get spores all through my lungs or whatnot, so I bolted. Trust the fungus. A university friend of mine lived with some FBFs. They used to let their dog crap all over the place, and eat all over the place. They would just pour leftover drinks and food on the floor and dog would walk around the house dragging its tongue on the ground, surely also licking up its own fesses at the time. A tile was missing in their shower. So water leaked into the wall, and on the other side of the wall was a bedroom with a damp corner where mushrooms grew. Their coffee table was a sheet of plywood on posts, and they had coasters that were drawn on with a jiffy marker. One of them ate nothing but pizza for 3 years and came down with scurvy. I was at this guy's house. He was pretty weird to begin with but we had been friends for so long I didn't seem to notice anymore. Until this one day, I'm in his room watching TV with him. His walls are covered in pictures of old movie stars from the 20s 40s. I was sitting on his floor when I feel something scratching my leg a bit. I look down and it's a toenail clipping. Whatever, I think. He probably forgot to throw it away. Nope. Once I saw the first toenail clipping, I couldn't stop seeing them. Literally, there were hundreds of toenail clippings all over the floor. He saw me looking at the floor, somewhat horrified. He chuckled and called them his friends. Vacuuming would be so satisfying. Comma when I was a kid and the NES came out, there was this poor kid at school that was rejected by everyone. His name was Patrick. There was horrible stories about his parents. Small town. His father was called Big Joe and I remember seeing him peeing in the middle of the mall's parking lot on a hot summer day, in front of everybody. They were a very, very dirty family. Comma so one day, Patrick told me his uncle, a wealthy man, sent him a NES for his birthday and that he would love if someone came to play with him. I was reluctant at first, because I wasn't sure my parents would approve, but I went anyways because I felt bad for him being rejected and alone. Comma so we go at his place, and as soon as we open the door, there is the worst smell I have ever encountered in my whole life. It was like a wall, you could actually feel it on your skin, I think. Just writing these words makes me gag. I was trying to breathe form the mouth, but I was tasting it. Comma I had never seen anything like it. There was dirty dishes, cigarettes butts and dog crap all over the place. There was a sofa in the kitchen with a small TV to which the nose was hooked up. His mother was playing it and didn't even notice we were there. 
There was empty bottles of soda and bags of chips all around her. Patrick asked her if she played Mario all night and all day without sleeping but he had a hard time getting her attention. After a couple of tries, she finally noticed we were there and said oh, sorry, you brought a friend to play Mario? I'll let you play. That game is so much fun I crap my pants. Comma at first I thought she was joking. But when she stood up, it was obvious that the woman literally crap her pants and pee all over the couch. Her pants and the couch were all wet and there was crap stains in her butt. And the smell. Comma I went to what seemed like a sink covered with dirty dishes and puked in a bowl containing an unknown substance in a late stage of putrefaction. Comma I told Patrick that I had to leave and ran out the door. Comma I never told my parents about this story because I feared their reaction. But I should tell them next time I see them. Kind of feel bad for Patrick. Not his fault his parents are fricked up. When I was a teenager, I had a hard time finding anyone who I could play Dungeons and Dragons with. I eventually discovered that there was a gaming club at a library over on the seedy part of town. So I rode my bike over every Saturday morning and joined in whatever was being played. Eventually, I met some guys in their late 20s who wanted to start up a D&D game. It turned out that they were basically a bunch of welfare bums. But I didn't care because I was getting my game on finally. I went over to their nasty houses and played D&D with them. Fortunately the DM had a job and a family, and we usually played in his finished basement. But sometimes we would play at the other houses. One of the players was also in the Amiga club, and he always had new games that I didn't have. So I would go over to his place with blank floppies and come back with a bunch of DIY pirated stuff. But his place was the worst. Basement bachelor unit in a CD building. It smelled like mold everywhere but his room, which smelled of dirty laundry and used tissues. He had a massive pre-internet pee collection, and I would usually leaf through them while I was waiting for the discs to copy. It was kind of disgusting. But hey, when you're pre-internet teenager getting access to unlimited pee will make you put up with a lot. So one day I was there with my best friend, who I had gotten into the D&D game a few weeks earlier. He and I were sitting on this dude's bed, when he gets up to go to the washroom down the hall. I will never know what possessed my buddy to do it, but he reached over and pulled open the guy's dresser drawer. It was full of clipped out magazine pictures. It took us a few seconds. But we realized that they were all clippings from the Sears catalogue, cut from the children's underwear section. Thousands of pictures of kids, boys and girls, in crisp white cotton. We closed the drawer, and never spoke of it again. TL. DR. In the dresser of the grossest bachelor frog I've ever met, we found cut out pictures of kids in their underwear. You met 4chan that day. This was not my experience, but my aunt's. It was back in the 50s when my aunt was a teenager. She was hired by a couple to babysit. She never babysat for this couple before, but she was impressed because they were fairly wealthy and lived in a big house. The two small children, around 5 and 6 years old, were well dressed and well behaved. My aunt spent the day with them, fed them, played with them, etc. That evening she got them ready for bed. The parents were due back later that night. My aunt heard some sounds coming from an upstairs closet. The children were in bed asleep. She opened the closet and found a crib. And in the crib was a baby. Both the crib and the baby were filthy. I think my aunt woke up the children and asked them about the baby. But their answers were vague. I don't recall my aunt having any luck getting information about the baby from the two older children. My aunt cleaned the baby up. She washed the bedding. I remember her telling me that the baby didn't really make much sound. Other than the little grunts that had drawn her attention to it in the closet. She probably tried to feed the baby, but I don't remember that part of the story. According to my aunt, the parents came home, paid her, thanked her, took the baby, and the dad drove her home. She never babysat for them again, and she has no idea what happened to the baby. I remember when she told me this story she said that as an adult she realized that she should have called the police. She was really upset that she hadn't thought as a naive teenager, to do something to help what was obviously an abused child. That is truly horrifying. One of my mom's friends has a house that isn't a horrible as some things mentioned, but it's pretty awful. They have a little dog who they have never given any training, so the dog pees and shoots everywhere. I remember when they first moved in there was a white carpet, 
It's nowhere near white anymore. The whole house smells like trash and poop because they use giant trash cans so they have to take the trash out less, and then stack the bags in the corner of the kitchen, like 5 or 6 bags at a time. Stains all over the rug from the dog, and they got a crack in the foundation so when it rained mud came up into the carpet, upstairs was worse. The kids had pretty much run off the upstairs. Nothing was ever cleaned. There was dog poop dried all over the floor. Some smeared across it. The cats peed on everything too. They had a landing area where there was a pool table and some games. Even the pool table smelled like pee. The daughter's room had clothes and empty soda cans everywhere. Movies on the floor. Necklaces hanging from things. Basically she never put away anything. I found a half eaten pizza under her bed once that was growing something. Her bathroom had dirty towel everywhere and makeup smeared across the walls and the tub hadn't been cleaned in ages. But the boy's room. Oh god. He kept his door closed all them time because just opening the door made you feel like you were going to die. So many towels and clothes you couldn't see the floor. Chips bags and pizza boxes everywhere. The boy is 15 now, but he is essentially a child. He couldn't wipe his own butt. No joking here. Absolutely serious until he was 9. He still isn't good at it by the smell in his room and the fact that there are stains all over boxes and towels and his bed. He has no mental issues. He is fully mentally capable and is actually very smart. Just, an absolute child. Not me, but a friend of mine. He was in an acquaintance's house to pick up something for work, and stayed a bit to shoot the crap. They go down to the basement which I guess like a games room. But in the corner is this huge shrine in honor of this girl that they both knew. It was this altar covered in pictures. Dolls with her face. Freaking hair even. The dude was kind of embarrassed about it. But in the way that you'd be a little embarrassed if you forgot to put away the lube. Where you just laugh it off. He explained it to my friend. Who left. Everyone at work found out about it. Including the girl. But from what he tell me the guy never really understood just how fricked up that was. They're married now. Number. Not really. A married couple I know used to be stalker and stalky. True story. When I was younger, my parents decided to build a new house. However, the buyer for the old one needed the house before the new one was done building. So we rented a house in the meantime. One day, while sitting on the toilet in the basement, I saw one of those flat crawling grey bugs that tend to appear when there's high humidity. No idea what you call them. I squished it but saw another one that was crawling out of a small hole in the wall. I extended my leg, still on the toilet, crapping, and pressed right above the hole. The wall felt mushy from the humidity, like damp cardboard. I pushed again with my toe when suddenly, dozens and dozens of those bugs crawled out of the hole and other similar holes in the wall. I should probably mention that, considering what I was doing at the moment, on the toilet, crapping, running away was not an option. They could very well be silverfish. Thinking back to how killing one led to a bunch coming out of nowhere, I now understand the behavior of the silverfish mob in Minecraft. Worst glory hole ever. I had a friend in grade school whose parents were borderline hoarders. Not bad enough to go on the show but it was difficult to get around the house. Well turns out that while it was difficult for people to get around it was like a centipede amusement park. They were everywhere. The big ones that looked like they got hit by a stray dose of radiation. I would spend the night and I swear I could hear them scuttling across the floor. My uncle was a hoarder, but instead of rotting food he collected lots of antiques and just bought stuff at the dollar store or Kmart and left it around his house. When he died, we had to clean out all this stuff. We found polaroids of stuff, mostly his beloved cats. One featured a little shrine with candles and flowers around a wood casket with his beloved cat Scooter, who lived to be 21 years old. So when we found a similar box in the barn I told my dad not to open it. Acquaintance of mine and his wife had moved into a newly built townhouse, rented, with two large dogs, labs. They'd been living there for a few months and I went in to sell him some computer stuff. There was dog crap and fur everywhere. Lots of dried full sized piles, some stamped down and stained into the living room carpet, which I don't think they used at all. They were both computer junkies so they spent all their time in their computer room upstairs. Going up the stairs, enough shedded fur to make at least 3 or 4 more dogs. Notice some crap upstairs on the landing but their computer room was mostly clean. 
They didn't have much in the house as far as furniture or anything at all really. It's not like they were hoarders. Just lazy and nasty. I just don't get how people can get to a point in their life where they think you know. I'm totally a-okay with just leaving this dog crap here on the floor. I dated a girl in high school who was bulemic. Though I didn't know it at the time. We were outside one night at her place and she was cold, and asked me to go grab her a sweatshirt from her closet, which I did. There was dozens of jars of vomit on the floor of her closet. I've never seen your after school specials, but common sense would say if they made an after school special about it perhaps it was common. So they hide it in jars no one knows they are running to the bathroom to puke after eating all the time. As a father of four girls, believe me, you watch for crap like that. I talked to her about it. She was ashamed but didn't lie. She had a ton of issues beyond that, and we weren't together very long anyway. I was called to the home of a mentally ill person, where I saw he had saved every urine stream and bowel movement he had made for probably the last year. Hundreds upon hundreds of jars, stacked up on shelves, and he was running out of room. Talk about the worst place to be during an earthquake. I was house sitting for a woman I worked for and found a naked picture of her boyfriend with a boner. They are 60. It was just out in the open. This isn't so bad, but the friend whose house I'm staying at has a rivets yellow lettered mellow policy in her bathrooms and her kids can't seem to remember the second part of the rhyme. If it's brown, flush it down. I've seen, and smelt, terrible things. They won't be eating any Taco Bell when I'm in town, I tell you what. Back in 1990-91 when I was 10 or 11, I was at a kid's slumber party. About two years earlier a serial killer had been caught and sent to prison in our area and this kid's parents moved in from out of town into his old house. I'm not sure if they knew ahead of time but if they did, I'm sure they got a great deal on it, maybe the reason they bought it. Anyway, this house was outside of town in the country surrounded by cornfields and was a nice house, but creepy as frick. That night this kid took us upstairs to the attic to show us something he had found the day before when he was exploring the house. He hadn't told his parents about it for some reason. We all got up there and he lifted a loose piece of plywood and pulled put a large piece of construction paper that had photos of people out in public glued to it. It was obvious that most of them had no idea that they were being photographed. Except for one that was a blurred shot of a guy up close who looked scared as frick. Also scattered around among the photos were weird but handwritten poems that at the time didn't seem to make any sense to me. Needless to say it creeped the frick out of most of us. Afterwards, this kid decided we should watch the movie Children of the Corn. Combining those two things together pretty much ruled out any sleeping for me that night. He slept like a log. Freaking friend of yours was being possessed by the house. Or maybe I watched too many horror movies. We went to this guy's house from my high school to work on an extra credit movie, James Bond, but about ionic bonding, ionic bond. We were checking out the scenes we had filmed by uploading the data to his computer. So the video is playing and it gets to the end of the final scene we shot, when suddenly it cuts to a video of what was obviously the guy's dong. We only saw a split second, but I'm pretty sure he was cooming or something. Anyway, we all jerk back in terror. We were in 9th grade, and the guy stammers, UHH my stupid brother and runs out of his room and beats the crap out of his 5 year old brother. Ha ha ha, oh my god, the kid was an idiot. Stupid little brother, always filming me masturbating. I had a friend who owned 3 dogs, they were crap inside the house and she wouldn't clean it up for weeks, their floor was like a hideous, stinky minefield. They also had a large compost heap in their back room and a hole in their floorboards where they would toss rubbish. This is the kind of crap you call animal cruelty for. Dunno if you can call anyone about the compost trash hole. A friend of my mom's was having computer trouble, so I got recruited into going over to fix it up. I ended up driving out to the middle of nowhere and met with her to be led further into the nothing. Finally getting there. The house looked a bit beat up on the outside but looked fine. As soon as I step in it was like getting hit by a Mack truck of horrible. The place was littered with trash. Everything was everywhere. Pill bottles were stacked up next to a nasty looking recliner. And I'm not 100% sure but I think there was poop on the floor. I'm a nice guy, though. Sorta. So I told her. Nice place, 
She smiled and led me back to her computer room which was worse. There were trash bags full of miss garbage. And not in the sense that there were heaps of garbage. It was literally trash bags stacked up in a fort like manner and she was walking on them. I felt so sick. Almost at the point of passing out. She started talking about what was wrong with the computer. But all I could focus on was the best way to delouse myself when I left. I told her the HDD was busted and told her to get a new one from Compusa then made a beeline to the door. I never told my mom how terrible this person's place was, to each his own, but that was the worst place I've ever been on. I had fleas when I left. TL. DR. Person's home is filled with trash bags of garbage and doesn't seem to care notice. When I used to be friends with this girl when I was in elementary school, and when I went to her house for the first time, her dad had a dog skin drug. Yep, apparently he wanted to cherish his deceased companion in the most morbid way ever. Ha 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 ha. I need to get some chihuahuas and get some placemats made. When my wife and I were house shopping, the house we ended up buying was a piece of work. The people who lived there were hoarders. They had cleaned up and sold almost everything just before we came to look at the house. Which ended up meaning there was a path a foot wide down the length of the hall. Huge piles of boxes on both sides. They ran some kind of edible underwear sales business out of one room. And the inventory overflowed into their bedroom. And had a teenage son with a room that couldn't be entered. Also, they didn't leave when we got there. Spoke loudly in German and heavily accented English. Walked around with some pretty nasty unclean bare feet and stayed uncomfortable close to us. Like the man of the house followed me into the half bath when I was looking at it. All of that said, the house was where we wanted it in the size we wanted, and with the allowances and low price we paid, we completely refurbished the entire house. Also, we came back again later, with the specific request to view the house without the homeowners present. Apparently you have to spell it out for some people. Comma ran some kind of edible underwear sales business out of one room. Truly the American dream. Not at home, but disturbing still. Guy I was in same school with had photos of girls above his desk. He gave the impression he had a relationship with them. This guy was a socially desperate kind of guy. Frustrated, passive aggressive, whining about people not wanting to be friends. Talking about how much he likes big boobs and asses and trying to be the funny little weird guy from some TV show. All good reason to not want to be more than acquaintances. Anyway, the pictures of girls. He'd gone over their faces with pen and anger. Very much anger. To the point of the photo paper being torn. But still having the photos stuck on his wall. You could almost tell when people had seen them. Changing their attitudes toward him. He's a future SVU story waiting to happen. I got to know this one dude in junior high through a mutual friend, and he seemed like a pretty cool guy. So, I went to his house a couple of times to play video games, ride bikes, etc. I met his parents who seemed kind of different I couldn't put my finger on it, until we were playing games one day, and his dad stepped in front of the TV and said, Well, this is weekly family pee night. We always let one of the kids pick out a video from the store and we watch it together. Wanna stay longer? Even though I was a young boy, that was just too much for me. The thought of him, his sister, and parents all watching pee together freaked me out. I didn't stay. I really hope this was just his way of getting you to leave. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.